In this video, I'm going to be talking about some of the advanced question options that Google Forms provides. Uh, we're going to be looking specifically at the description um, option and the data validation option. These are going to change a little bit based on the type of question that you're working with. Now, the first thing I want to do is uh, show you how to add a description below a um, form question. So I'm going to add a new question in my um, form here. Um, typically when you create a form, the first question you ask is what is your name? Which seems pretty straightforward, but it actually doesn't specify if you want their full name, their first name, their whole name, what you want uh, there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the snowman. Those are the three dots in the bottom right corner of the question. I'm going to turn on the description. I'm going to say show description. That allows me to provide some explanation below the question stem further um, describing what I expect. So I would um, say, please provide your full name. You don't have to do this for every question. You have to turn that on, but it can be helpful in making sure that the, your survey participants know exactly what you're expecting. Um, another example um, down here, so I have email address. I may want to go in and, and say, please provide an email that you check regularly something uh, along those lines. So it just allows you to describe what you're expecting. So that's the first thing. The second thing that you, you definitely want to consider um, is making these required questions. Um, you see the toggle switch there. Um, generally, I don't recommend uh, using this unless you're adamant about receiving um, a response to that particular question. When you're doing a survey, I'll turn the, that on or off depending on the type of question. If you're doing a quiz, um, then you probably are going to make them all required. So that's the first thing. Um, the next thing I want to talk about uh, at length is something called data validation. So Google Forms does have the ability to automatically collect email address. We'll uh, take a look at that in a future lesson. It's in the form settings. But it doesn't allow you to provide um, any context. Uh, it also doesn't allow you to move that question where you want it on the form. It always shows up at the top. So one option that you have is to include a question that says email address. Now, unfortunately, people have a very hard time typing their email address in correctly, which is quite frustrating. You get all bunch of bounce back emails. Um, and so what you can do if you click on, uh, you're going to add a text question that says email address. You're going to click on the snowman and you're going to select this option that says response validation. Response validation is a tool that allows you to specify the type of response that you expect to receive and Google Forms will look at your expectation and then what someone is submitted and if it doesn't match it will provide them with an error message requiring them to fix that problem before this form is submitted. Email address is super easy to do. So I'm going to turn on response validation and it's going to turn on a whole new row of content here. We're going to go to the first drop down box and I'm going to select the text option because we're expecting a text response and that allows us to then set the email address. So we're expecting an email address. Now it's important that anytime you use data validation, you provide an error message because if someone goes to submit the form and there's an error, they need to know what that error is. And so something along the lines of what I've typed here, oops, please check your email and try again. Now let me go to the live form and show you what this will look like. Um, so here's my email address. So if I just try to type in some gibberish, it's not going to work. I must type in something of, you know, a username at something dot something else. So it's just looking for that format. Now I can go like this and it'll allow it to be submitted. So it's not foolproof, but it's better than not having anything at all. So that's a very common one. I use this one all the time in my forms. Let's take uh, data validation to the next level. If you are requesting any um, personal contact info, 
when you receive that info, especially if you're creating some kind of a directory or you need to do something with that data, ensuring that the information you receive is in a consistent format is exceedingly helpful. Uh, phone numbers are a great example. There are so many different ways that someone can type in a phone number. They can just type in the straight digits. They can put dashes, parentheses, dots, spaces. It can be a mess. If you want your phone numbers in a very specific format, you can use what's called a regular expression. Now this gets a little complicated. This is even you know, more in depth than I really care to be an expert in. And so I've uh, just copied the code that someone else has provided uh, to me. Now I'll give you the link to a, a nice blog post that has all of these. But we're gonna set this to regular expression. So this is a mathematical formula that basically says, look at the response and it should match this particular format. So in here you can you can kind of see it should have um, you know the number of digits and dashes and uh, you can see the parentheses here. So in my example I'm requiring Parenthesis, three digits, space, three dash two. All of that is coded in here. So regular expression, and we're going to say matches, and then you're going to paste the pattern in there. And then again, make sure you make uh, put your error uh, message as well. Now I've further clarified that by turning on the description field and saying, hey, please enter your phone number like this. So I've given them a clue two times into what I'm expecting. So here's what it looks like. You know, if I do um, just my phone number, type it in there, it won't work. But if I go ahead and add in the parentheses, um, now it uh, it works. So it just again it's helpful if that's important to you. If you want your data to be in a consistent format, you can use what's called again a regular expression. And you can learn this code, but honestly, I would just do a, a Google search for Google Forms data validation phone number, and you'll find the code, and you can customize it a little bit if necessary. I want to move on to um, a free response question here. So you're doing a writing prompt. Um, something and you want your students to have the response fit a certain length. Now there's a couple different options that you can use here. Um, I was able to find a regular expression that requires a, in this example here, is a 12 to 15 or excuse me, 9 to 14 word response. So the response has to be in that range otherwise it will display this error message. Now that is a little more complicated. Google does have a built-in one for length. Um, unfortunately, the, the frustrating part is it's not a word count, it's a character count. So you kind of have to estimate in your mind, you know, how many characters would a word or a sentence or a paragraph be and set it accordingly. So this will allow you to do a maximum or minimum, again, character count, including spaces, punctuation, uh, et cetera, not a word count. So length is one of the data validation options that you'll have. I'm going to go into a, a multiple choice question here. Um, we don't have a whole lot of options for multiple choice. Really the only option that you'll see, it's kind of a different format, is shuffle option order. I like to use this for quizzes um, so that a kid can just kind of look at their neighbor and see that they picked the first one and just copy them. Uh, so this will uh, shuffle the four options within this question into a random uh, order each time. Um, this also can be helpful if you're doing a survey, especially if it's a, a large survey with lots and lots of responses. There is something uh, known as the selection bias. Uh, you tend to get a small increase in people who pick the first option on a list and the last option on a list. So doing this shuffle option order will eliminate that bias and get more accurate um, survey results. We can do the same thing with a um, multiple choice grid question. Um, we can shuffle the options and then you can also limit uh, one response per column. So in my example here, we're looking at ice cream flavors. Um, if you only want them to love one color or one flavor, you can uh, require that as I've done here. And so you're going to get one selection for each of the available rows. So that's um, kind of, that's going to apply to the multiple choice. It actually also works with the drop down option. Uh, you can do the shuffle option with that as well, as well as the grid question.
Last one I wanted to show you is uh, something that math teachers might be interested in. Um, so I'm using again the data validation um, and this time we've got lots of different options. Um, so I can uh, set this to, you know, what was the answer to question 12 on last night's pro uh, homework. I can set this data validation to a number um, response and that number should be equal to and then if I wanted I could enter the actual answer to the homework problem. So basically what I'm doing here is if the kid, um, the student does not answer this problem correctly, I can give them this kind of clue that says, eh, I don't think that's right, why don't you check with someone else and try again. It will only accept the uh, correct answer, which in this case was 12.5. Now, English teachers, humanities teachers, you could set this up as well. Um, you could require that a text response contains a certain word. So if you have a vocabulary word or an important word, you can ensure that that word is used in the response uh, from your students. So a couple interesting ways uh, to use this feature. Um, this is also something that teachers will use to set up um, kind of a password protected form. Um, I'll look at that in more detail in a future um, video, but essentially you just say, you know, what is the password? and then use data validation to say the password has to be um, Pluto, or something like that. This is not 100% secure. It's kind of a workaround or a hack, uh, but it's something that might be helpful for you in the classroom.